welcome to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Glasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Out of the Box with Christine. I am your host, Christine Blasdale, and I'm so, so happy that you are tuned in today because this program is very special. It's personally very special to me, and um, as you listen to this program, you're going to understand why. But I'm so very grateful and thankful to have on this program today Denise Lamoro. And Denise And Denise is an incredible, incredible healer who I actually just recently got to experience. And through her own quest to heal from childhood trauma, fear, and addiction, she has created Healings with Denise. She is a certified crystal dream healer, IYS therapist, Reiki master, channel, and trauma healer. And her true passion is the study of the brain and the impact of childhood trauma in addiction, anxiety, autoimmune disease, and the physical body. Denise specializes in releasing traumas from the unconscious brain and the cellular memory within our bodies. And I'm so, so very happy to have on the program today, Denise Lamoureux. Denise, thank you so very much for coming on Out of the Box with Christine. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. And wow, wow, wow. Before we get into <laughs> before we get into what happened to me and my session with you, I want to let our listeners know it's always about the story, right? It's always about where we come from, how we got to where we are today. So if you don't mind, would you let our listeners know a little bit about you, where you're from, and how you got into this amazing world of doing healings? Yes, it would be my pleasure. So I am a child of two alcoholics, and uh, my father was a rageaholic also, and my mother was a raging alcoholic. But back then, we didn't know about those things, and we certainly didn't talk about those things, right? Closed doors. So I am going through my life and struggling with a lot of things, but uh, I end up buying a restaurant when I was 28 years old, and I had a couple of kids, two boys, and I ended up divorcing when I was young. So here I was at about 32, 33 years old, this young mom, I was doing really well. I was very successful. You know, the the typical outside stuff, Christine, I had a Mercedes, I had a house in Westport, I had a little sports car. I mean, everything looked great. But inside, I was suffering with severe anxiety and paralyzing panic attacks. Um, I felt I was really not good enough. I couldn't do anything right, which made no sense because I was incredibly successful and doing everything right. But I didn't have really any role models as a mother, so I felt like I was failing everywhere as a child with my children. And also, you know, working moms back then kind of didn't exist, so I felt not good enough in that respect. Anyway, I begin to drink Chardonnay. (laughs) <laughs> and I find out that Chardonnay, right? I find out that Chardonnay kills anxiety. It sure does. And at this point, <laughs> I have been to everybody. I have been to doctors. I have been to neurologists. I have been to, you know, many, many doctors. And everybody just basically says, you're nuts. Because anxiety wasn't talked about back then. It wasn't understood. I mean, we're talking 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. So... Finally, what I did was I started to study Eastern medicine and not in the point of becoming a healer. I just wanted to feel better. So I would study with anybody that would take me because back then you couldn't really find healers like me and you could find teachers. So I would just study and study and study just for the presence of being in the room with these people and hoping that I would get better. And because of that, I ended up getting certified in all these modalities and many more than we put on the bio. But and then what happened with that was I ended up to get into some really advanced 
certifications because I had all these other certifications. So I took John Holland's advanced mediumship classes and things like that. And the next thing I know, I'm a healer, but I'm not using it. Now, here was the really interesting part. I'm getting better a little teeny bit, but not much. And I'm drinking far too much Chardonnay. And behind my restaurant was my liquor room, my office, my food storage. It was a, a building that was behind there. I own the property. And it got struck by lightning and burned to the ground. Who? Yeah. And I did not at the time, was not aware of the connections to the divine. So, But I understood that it, the building was gone. So I rebuilt this building to be a liquor room, to be an office, and to be a storage. But it was so beautiful that I thought, I'm not putting liquor in here. I'm not putting food in here. <laughs> I'm not putting Chardonnay was, in there. <laughs> yeah. And it was one of those stories, Christine, where you, it was completely built with love. I didn't have anywhere near enough money to buy it. I remember the asphalt man came to me. I met him once for five minutes, and the asphalt was $9,000. And I said to him, okay, thank you so much. I don't have it. You know, I'll call you someday. And he said, well, you'll pay me someday? And I said, I will. And he said, well, I'll do it tomorrow. And the whole building wow. was built like that. I mean, it was just extraordinary. And so it ended up that it was this beautiful space. And I had a friend of mine who was a Reiki master. And she was sort of looking for some place to do her work. And I said, well, she's all I've got is two floors of, of space. So come do some work there. And once she came to do some work there, here's the story of manifesting. I decided I owned a wellness center. <laughs> now, I had no furniture, no phone, no computer, but I decided it was a wellness center. So I would sort of say to people when I would meet them, yeah, I own a wellness center. Do you want to come work there? And that's how it happened. And I start, it ended up that I started hosting healers from all over the world. And that was a lot of fun because you had to house them and they would stay for months at a time because they would come from so, for so long and drive them around and take care of them. So there's lots more education that you're learning. Of course. But it was kind of a really weird life because here I am trying to get sober and owning this wellness center and there's the healers are there and they're there for let's say two three months at a time and I'm doing workshops all weekend and then everybody leaves at five o'clock and I throw on my other clothes and I go over and run my restaurant and I'm eating cheeseburgers and drinking Chardonnay right so it was not making any sense at all so finally uh, I got to a point where we went off to India and I, again, I'm in an ashram in India and I'm there for a few weeks and I'm, you know, dressed in a sari and I'm, I'm praying in the ashram and in the temples and all I want to do is drink. And I left early just to go to my hotel and drink. And so I realized that here I was in AA, which I still am, and in the 12 step program, which I love. Uh, but I couldn't stay sober. And here I am in spirituality, in an ashram in India, and I can't stay sober. And so there's got to be something that I'm missing. So I came back to America, and I here I am with the Wellness Center. I sold my restaurant because I realized that it was impossible for me to stay sober owning a bar. Correct. I got that. I kept the Wellness Center, and I had all these gurus there that were coming from around the world and I loved them and it was a beautiful experience and I wouldn't trade any of it. But you know, it's a little tricky because that guru disciple relationship, you're kind of waiting on them. Right. And you're yeah. kind of hoping for your next initiation or your next step up the ladder, if you will, you know, kind of has a little bit of that corporate Amway feel to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. And it's how much can you donate? And it seemed to me that I could get closer to God with them if I would iron their clothes. <laughs> and so I realized that I was still staying in my low self-esteem. And that was my childhood that I wasn't good enough. That was my childhood that said, you know, you're a piece of crap or you didn't do this enough. And being the owner of the wellness center, I kind of got it double because they would be unhappy with the way the place looked or they would be unhappy with how many bookings they had or what was the what went out in the database and et cetera. So I finally one day just said that that was that. And I stopped hosting everybody and I just sold all that property. And I went off in search of the answer to why I wasn't staying sober. 
and I came across trauma. I listened to a TED Talks that Dr. Gabor Mate did, oh. and it just hit me. Dr. Gabor and Mate, I, yes, we love right? him. Yes, yes. Who doesn't? You know, who doesn't love that man? And he, I just went, oh my God, that's it. So I began to study trauma. I began to study epigenetics. I began to study the neurobiological system. And I began to study addiction. And I could understand why I wasn't relapsing. And I realized that the trauma that came from my childhood was going to trigger any experience or be triggered by any experience that you're going to do to me today. So if let's take abandonment, for example, if I'm already feeling abandoned as a child, and that was one of my core issues among many, and you do something in the slightest bit abandoning me, well, on a scale of one to 10, I'm going to go to a 20. Right. Because I already live at 10. Right. And so that's why I realized I drank, because if something made me feel unsafe, on a scale of one to 10, I would go to a 20 because my anxiety was already at 10. Correct. And I used to right. drink Chardonnay never to get drunk. That was never my plan. It ended up that way, but that was never my plan. My plan was to just get normal. And for uh -huh. many, many years, that's how it worked for me. I could work all day. I could come home. I could drink a couple glasses of Chardonnay, usually a bottle. And then I could still go out and conquer the world. I could get everybody into their schools. I could get everybody into college and et cetera, et cetera. But as we know, you know, after a while, it's two bottles and then it just gets out of hand. And so what happened when I started to study this trauma work was that I realized that if I could get rid of the traumas, then the things that you would do to me today would have no power because nobody can press my buttons if I don't have a button. If you have no triggers. Right. Right. And so I started to work on that. And what I found, which was really extraordinary, is that not only can I do that with you guys, if you can remember, but because of all my Eastern medicine background, I can override the conscious brain and I can see your trauma for you if you can't. Wow. And that's really cool. So I can see it to the point of I can say, look, it, I'm in a bedroom. There's two beds. The bedspreads are green. Let me tell you what color the stripes are. Let me tell you what the lamp looks like. Like the divine, the divine or the unconscious or the quantum world, whatever, however you want to work, because I work both Eastern and Western medicine, takes me there. So I'll go along and I start to, to do this trauma work on myself because everything I do is tested on me long before. And I'm amazed that I haven't picked up a drink since. And now I've got quite a few years so sober. And I don't have any of the feelings, any of the emotions that I used to feel. I used to feel a loneliness that was so unbearable. I just didn't think I could survive it. And it wouldn't matter if I was married, if I was in my restaurant, if I was in a crowded room. I was so lonely. But that was my childhood. That was that being left alone little girl and fear, anxiety. So one thing I said to you yesterday, and I think this is a great way to describe it, is that let's use me, children of alcoholics, but children of any kind of abuse, children of any kind of trauma. And again, I want to emphasize trauma isn't what happened to me. It's how did I feel? So I didn't have exactly. to be beaten or I didn't have to have an alcoholic child. You know, a critical father is enough. A critical mother is enough, right? To get the, I don't, I'm not good enough. But let's say you're a child of alcoholism or alcohol or abuse, emotional abuse. Imagine that there's a bear in the forest. Well, your brain is going to say, whoa, there's a bear. It's going to send energy to your heart. Your heart's going to start pumping. It's going to start sending energy to your adrenal glands. Your cortisol levels will rise and you're going to run. And if you fell and broke your ankle, you are still going to be able to get up and run. The same way a mother can lift a car off a child, right? Well, that's great if there's a bear in the forest. But what if you're a kid and the bear comes home every day? And what if you're a kid and you're not sure if the bear is coming home every day? Well, then you're going to activate in that exact same survival mode every minute of the day. That's how your body is going to behave. 
So I don't even need to know yet what's going on when I get home from school. I'm already scared when I'm leaving the playground. Exactly. Right? right? That's that so, dr- the dread of the dread yeah. of going of, of 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 a lot of kids when the school bell would go off, they'd be excited about going home and yet if you're a child of an alcoholic or an abusive parent, when that bell would go off, it would it's not the same feeling. Um, right. It's, Even a child of two working parents, right? Yes. Feeling alone. Yes. And the working parents aren't doing anything traumatizing. They're trying to feed their kids. But that isn't how the unconscious brain of a child absorbs it. Correct. And that's where we have to remember. So, yeah. So now you go, you're a child. You, you're now an adult. You've been activating in this survival mode all your life. It's worked to my advantage because I think fear was my greatest motivator. I was so afraid of failing that that's one of the reasons why I was so successful. But now what's going to happen? The body's going to give out somewhere. Somewhere. Exactly. It's either going to go to Lyme or autoimmune disease or shingles or asthma or addiction. Because it's going to have to get a release somewhere because it's like you're in my driveway, you've got your car in neutral and you're flooring it. Exactly. It's going to, something's going to break down somewhere. And so in some ways, we look at whatever coping skill or coping mechanism we chose, mine being Chardonnay, and we say in an odd way, thank you so much because I don't think I would have survived without it. Right. But now that we get to do this trauma work and this healing work, we don't need that coping skill because we don't have those same cellular memories and those same triggers, as you said, or buttons, as we'd say, that I need the drink. And we're free and we're free from the need of that escape. And again, when I talk about addiction, I want to be sure everybody understands. It doesn't matter to me if it's alcohol or drugs. It doesn't matter to me if it's shopping. It doesn't matter to me if it's control right? Control, uh, power, money, all those things are addiction. So that's pretty much how my journey came. And then uh, once I finally started to do the trauma work and see the results that I was getting, that was it. That was my takeoff. And I spent a, a couple of years really diving in to the trauma work and really doing the work before I decided to start speaking about it. Because I wanted to know that I was a hundred, you know, that I was a hundred percent right. That well, there weren't any gray areas. That I wasn't messing up. That I knew, I knew I could do it. That I knew in two to three months, really two to two months, I could change somebody's life. The divine. I'm just a conduit. I am just a channel. I do not give me any credit for anything other than being able to channel. But um, so that's what's happened. And now here I am speaking to you. <laughs> yes, you are, and Here I want to. And I want to let our listeners know. I mean, I I had a session with with Denise, and um, I was quite impressed uh, because of the immediacy of it, the release yeah. of it as well. And I want to um, let our listeners know a little bit because you have this wonderful ability um, to, of course, to to tap into those in the subconscious mind or the unconscious mind, which knows everything. Right? It knows every mm-hmm. word that everything. we've ever said. It knows every. Um, um, and every hurt and and pain that has been inflicted upon us, any hurt and pain that we've right. inflicted on other people, it's basically um, a absolute recording of everything that everything. we've ever experienced. And the important thing to remember on it too, Christine, is not only is that the record keeper, but it's how we behave because we activate from the unconscious mind ninety five percent of the day. Ninety five percent of the of the time, we are activating, we are making decisions in our life based on the subconscious mind. Exactly. Like you don't think I have to pick up a fork and put it to my mouth to eat. You just do it. Exactly. Exactly. And so when your husband says to you, blah, 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 you're going to react from the unconscious mind. You're going to react from the inner child. And it's those triggers, again, that um, are so are so powerful. But what I really just I, I was really blown away with is that not only you are working on the releasing those traumas from the unconscious mind you have this wonderful blend so you are working on a on a, on a healing 
um, uh, a definite on, on a healing level, an energetic healing level, and you're walking us through it. Um, and, and again, you don't have to be in person because uh, Denise is on the East Coast, but you don't have to see her in the East Coast. You can if you're there. That's great. See her in person. But you can do this via Skype or, or phone. Uh, te- it's just a telephone uh, conversation. Like we did yesterday. Yeah. Exactly. Which was amazingly how, how powerful that was. But also what I really appreciate is that you have so you have a, a blend of, of gifts and talents. You also have um, a wonderful psychic ability as well where yeah. – now, when you when you say that you are you're shown um, you're shown either what are the images are they pictures when you're talking to someone and then or is it someone some uh, something is coming through and it is telling you if it's divine source or one of our um, guardians or or, or um, angels right. Is, right is it telling you that you need to what? say that. It's it's pretty loud, you know. They're, it's they're, loud. They're very, they're very bossy on the other side. Are they bossy? And so, yeah, and so is the divine. I mean, that's the thing. It's very fast, and you saw that in yesterday's in yesterday's session. It's fast. They don't waste any words. Um, and it's two different ways. And I think that this might sound odd to somebody, but this is the way I look not at our it, audience. The way I work with it. Um, when your grandmother. Yes, my grandma. Uh, If I can can say that, (laughs) came in and she was beautiful and I was able to describe her. She was actually telling me what I could see her, but she was telling me what you would recognize about her. Yes. Right. And that's how it works, that you would recognize this. So maybe there would have been 40 things I could have said about her and maybe only three of them would have made you go, absolutely, that's my grandmother. But she picks the three. Correct. She gets the three to tell me. And so she's the one that came and said all kinds of things, we, which we, you know, will keep between us. And then, but then the other thing we want to look at is when your spirit guide, the divine, your u- universe, when they talk to me, it's two different things. Because remember, my dead aunt Betty, she might think that Joe is the perfect guy for me, but that might not work for my highest and best good in my destiny, right? Right. Betty might think that she likes Joe's yacht. <laughs> Right, right. As where the universe knows, I'm a healer. Yeah, and I'm not. I, you know, yacht schmuck. I'll go on it and give you a healing, but it's not my destiny. Right? It's nothing against yacht. You get my drift. Yes. So the those vo- so the so the the universe and 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 I wanted you to get into because we uh, listen as human beings we do we feel very alone. We, we can we can be in a crowded you know in in a crowded room with a lot of people we feel very alone we could be with our families our loved ones our our spouse and we still feel alone like what you were talking about but are there is there more than just like one guardian angel or or yeah. you know a god or jesus or buddha is there explain to our listeners cuz i think this when i grasped this fully I felt so freaking awesome. Right. We have a host of people, we of of, of energy beings um, that are that are with us, for us, rooting for us the whole time. Yeah, yeah, and and we can ask, we can talk to them, but most importantly, we can we can ask them for signs. And I'm like that, you know. I, being a child of of trauma, right. We tend to need confirmation that we're safe on a regular basis, right? Correct. So I think that if Jesus came down right now and said to me, Denise, everything's fabulous. Kids are great. You're never going to have to worry about anything. Just surrender and let go. I think I'd want to see him next Thursday. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Right. And so I'm one of those people that asks the universe for signs. So I asked for red balloons. Because really? I think red balloons are tricky to produce. Yeah. Because if you give me a sign that I'm going to recognize, like if I say, uh, send me nickels. Right. I mean, you or, know, it's different. Or send, me, father- or send me white feathers or send me... Uh... Right. Well, the thing was, you know, when I was in a really bad shape many, many years ago, when I still owned my restaurant pre-wellness center, um, my one of my first spiritual teachers said to me, the universe, you're not going to fall apart. The universe is going to start to send you feathers. And over the next 90 days, you're going to get feathers. And over 90 days, Christine, I got 287 feathers. Get out of here. Yeah. And I am not telling you I was walking the beach. I am saying one was in Blockbuster Video. Did you guys have Blockbuster yes. Video in California? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
blockbuster video on the floor. You know, you hop out of your car and you come back into your car and one's in the coffee mug spot. So I ended up <laughs> naming my wellness center Finding Feathers. That's what it was called. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Because it was the yeah. beginning of my journey to, to leaving in the other side. So now I ask for red balloons, you know, when I need a sign. Because red balloons are tricky. And then I don't go into a party store. Yeah, right, I, right, I, right, I, right, right. The red balloons. But yeah, we've got lots of guides. And I think the best way to look at it is, look, whether you believe in Jesus, Buddha, uh, God, uh, Allah, Christianity, Judaism, I agree with you. Whatever it is you believe in, I agree with you. Because we're all one, and there's all this universe out there that has the ability to create all these miracles that we don't believe we can pull in. Right. And the thing is, we don't believe we can pull them in because we don't ask for them. And we don't ask for them because we don't think we're worthy. But when we start asking for them, the universe is more than happy. Again, universe, God, divine, whatever you want, spirit guides, more than happy to bring them to us. So I did an experiment once for a month with, I would say, almost every one of my clients, where I said to them, okay, you need an answer to that question. I want you to ask for a red balloon. And every one of them, within a day, sent me a picture <laughs> of their red balloon that they could not believe. And I had one client, she was funny, she needed two balloons. <laughs> she, I love her. She needed a balloon for her health and she needed a balloon on love. And so I said, okay, let's ask for a pink balloon on health and a red balloon on love. And the next morning, she was pulling out of her driveway and evidently it must've been her neighbor's 50th birthday party. And her husband, the neighbor's husband, around their lamppost um, hung 10 red balloons and 10 pink balloons. Get out of here. Oh, I could tell you story after story after story about balloons. My phone texts me red balloons. <laughs> but the universe will do that. If you ever go listen to somebody like James Van Prague, I think, have you yes, heard of him? James, yes, Van yes. James Van Prague will tell you they love to use the internet. So, love to. so all we need to do, So all we need to do is ask for a sign? I mean, yeah. but this is what this is the way I do it. Yeah, I don't ask for a sign that's going to be easy. Correct. Right? Because if it's not going to shock me, if it's not going to blow me out of the water, it's not going to work for me. Because then that that all that ego also comes in and goes, oh, that's just a coincidence. Right. And if you're child of trauma, we do that all the time. <laughs> we need to be blown away. Right. We need it to be. There's no doubt in the way in the world that this divine, that this sign could have come. So that's why I go for the red balloon. But you can pick anything. You could pick. You know, I, even though you said white feathers before, you know, they don't pop around quite so easy. So they're not a bad sign. But I do think they drop pretty easily. I think they're a, they're a sign from our angels that we just get all the time to let us know we're okay. But I like I like the real rocking signs. Red balloon. Red balloons. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a yeah. tough one. Because I, I, I get a lot of stuff. I get uh, with the synchronicity stuff. I get a lot of the numbers, you know, because we're always on yeah. our phone. We're constantly, I'm, I'm constantly on my phone. Um, and but so I get a lot of the... say to yourself, well, I'm always on the phone. Well, Ex it's just the phone. Exactly. No, and, I, and exactly. And I get the 222, two, 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 which is um, uh, 22 okay. in general has been always my uh, happy, lucky number. I love it. Right. I don't know why I love it so much, but I just love it. And so um, I think that's how they, they like, they like to come. if you ask for a red balloon... And you drive out of your driveway and you get about halfway up your road and attached to a mailbox is a red balloon with no for sale sign, no open house sign or anything like that. Just a red balloon. Okay. You're going to get it. Okay. Right? Let, let's do that. Let's do that with our listeners. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so out of the box listeners, we're going to ask for, we're going to ask for red balloons, right? We're going to ask right? for red balloons. Ask red balloon and, and I want you to pick. What I would suggest you do first, the, for the first time, is ask for a red balloon to let you know that the divine is with you or okay. your spirit guides. I would prefer you not ask the red balloon be from one of your passed on relatives. Okay, so so it's just so much. I just would, yeah. would rather we stay with the divine in this and the universe and the power of being able to heal. There's so many ways to chat with our dead relatives that I would really like our listeners to get the healing power of the universe. So so we're asking for signs of the of of their being with us of of the divine being with us of our our wonderful guardians the universe our, has got our back that the universe has our back and in in order to um to let us know that this is true 
we want to see red balloons. We want a red balloon. Okay. Okay. Boom. Got it. Right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I and wanted to. I'm, I'm, trust me. It. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be taking pictures and calling you. That would be great yeah. too. And if if listeners, if you experience this too, please send uh, send me the uh, any images that you have of your red balloons, and I'll make sure. Yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna give you contact information as well for Denise. You have to get in contact with her because she's phenomenal. And please, yeah, and they can send me the pictures of the red balloons too. Exactly. We'll just blow it away. Exactly. And um, and I really encourage folks to uh, to also book a session with you. So we'll give out that information at the end of the show. I, I really wanted to because because of my personal experience that I had with you and I know also with your background as well as a, uh, uh, as a child and a child of trauma, I really, this is what I'm getting, the hit that I'm getting right now is that the um, many people that are listening to this broadcast um, are, ch- are children uh, who, ha- who were raised in, in a traumatic situation, mm-hmm. either... Um, Alcohol, physical abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And I really want, I I want us to give them something. Um, And I don't know if that's just something that you, that, that, that you channel right now that, that they need to hear. Or I just, that's what I'm getting is like, you need need to talk about that being a child of trauma. Absolutely. So I think where, what we want to do, first of all, is let's, let's give them, let's give all the listeners like a little something that is going to help release some of the trauma, right? All on their own. Okay. Should we do that? That would be, we'll give them a little, that would a be little trick of the trade. You know, something I would say to somebody that called me here, just start this until you can get in to see me. A wonderful gift. Yes. Right. Let's do that. And let's just talk a little bit about um, self-esteem because that's what I want to talk about because whether you're a child of alcoholism, let's take them apart. If you're a child of an alcoholic, basically you were probably most of the time told that you were a piece of crap, yes. uh, that you were not good enough because alcoholics are going to lose it, yell and scream. So you've got the not good enough, right? Correct. If you're a child of sexual abuse, you are always going to feel shame and blame because you're not sure if it was your fault, if you brought it on. And 90% of the time, you're not going to tell anybody so right. it's suppression. So it's 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 that uh, guilt and shame buried within you. And if uh-huh. and if it's sexual, then it's buried within your your sacral chakra and in your heart too. I would believe exactly. And and it gets worse because the bigger the more we suppress something, the bigger it gets. Right. Gotcha. So so there you go. You're going to suppress somebody. And if you did tell your mom, and she doesn't believe you. Oh my god. Oh right. Betrayal. That's a lot. I got a lot of that. Betrayal and 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 abandonment. I would think. Oh my God, my kid. I have so many clients that went through that. Just and devastation, especially if it was the stepfather or the father. Yes. So, so really understanding that you did nothing wrong. You did nothing wrong. And what we have to remember is, the people that cause trauma to us. And I have to remember. Listen, let's be honest. I was an alcoholic. I caused some trauma to my children. And I have to live with that every day. And I want to do healings on my kids. I do healings on my kids every day if they'd let me. But they don't let me. (laughs) (laughs) But they do love their mom. I'm very fortunate. They love and forgive their mom very, very much. But I know that in my drinking days, they didn't feel safe. Right. Right? Right. How could you if your mother's upstairs passed out sound asleep at 730 at night? Right. So I, you know, I understand that. So what we want to remember about these parents that caused us trauma or their alcoholism is they were just broken, yeah. right? They were traumatized themselves. So I look at my mother and my father and I see all the lineages be- you know, before them were, were alcoholics. All of them were sexual abuse and I didn't have any sexual abuse, but I think my mom did. Um, and so we forgive them for that because they did the best they could with what they had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things I like best about the work I do is that we can release this when we release it from us, when we release it from Denise or Christine. And I said this to you yesterday, we release it from our kids. Yes. And we release it from their kids and their kids and their kids and their kids. And this trauma no longer 
gets passed down in the lineage. It's over. It's done. Does it also go the back? Does it go the other way? Six generations back. Yeah, we it goes there about six generations back at the same time. So it goes six. Gen- so it, so it goes forward, and it, everyone exactly. that's coming forward from you, the lineage, and then and also backward. Yep, six back and seven forward. Brilliant. I'm in the middle. Brilliant. So yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I always say to myself, someday when I have grandchildren and they understand, I'm going to just tell them, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for all the drama work I've done. But let me make sure before we run out of time that I that I give folks a little bit yes, that are please. suffering with anything. And even if you're not traumatized, but you're just suffering with anxiety, but generally if you're suffering with anxiety, you got some trauma going on somewhere. So what I'd like them to do, and it's going to sound a little odd, but I promise you, it's very, very powerful. Um, just rub your palms together. Now, as soon as you rub your palms together, you activate the chakras in your palm system. And as soon as you do that, the law of flow says, one of the universal laws, that we have to refill from the heart into the hands. And as soon as we do that, the law of flow still says, I've got to put energy into the top of their head to refill the heart. So as soon as you rub those palms together and put them up in the state of receivership, You're moving energy and you're moving love, which is really important. And I could tell you lots of reasons why I wanted to go through the throat and ego and I'm not safe and I've got to control, but let's just skip that for another time. And then what I want you to do is then I want you to do a mantra and I want it to be, and maybe you can put it out uh, type wise somehow. Sure. It's going to be Om Namo, N-A-M-O. Narayani, N-A-R-A-Y-A-N-I. Om Namo Narayani. Now, there's gobs of great mantras out there, you know, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Lakshmi, and all of them are great, and I, and I love them all. But the reason why I love this one is just like you said a, a few minutes ago when we were talking about the God, universe, spirit guides. This one says, I surrender to the power that is. I surrender to the universe. So it sort of takes away from me, whether I'm in a Jesus mode, whether I'm in a Buddha mode, whether I'm in a Lakshmi Ganesha mode, right? Right. It takes care of everything. And it helps me to surrender. And I do want to say just a thing about a throat for people. If you notice that you're doing this and you start coughing, it's because we keep I'm not safe and I have to control everything in the throat. And so when this beautiful light that's coming in from above, trying to get to the center of my chest, because I've just rubbed my palms together, is trying to come through, it gets jammed up in that throat because I'm trying to stay safe and I'm trying to control myself. And by saying Om Namo Narayani, which says I surrender to the universe, it pushes the energy out of the throat so more light and more energy can get down into the center of the chest. Now, that's if you're looking at it from West, West, uh, Eastern medicine. You want to look at it from Western medicine. Remember, Einstein had said no conflict can be resolved from the same vibration in which it's been created. Correct. That's true. So if you rub your palms together, you're, you're having a bad day. Okay. You're going to sit down. You rub your palms together. We're you rubbing them now. Up. <laughs> yeah, you put them up. And then your heart heart opens, even if you're not looking chakras, because you're in Western medicine, rubbing your palms together is going to activate friction. That friction is going to make the energy go down to your palms from your heart. That friction is going to make more energy come into the top of your head. And Christine, right now, you can feel energy coming into the top of your head, because I can see it from here. Totally. Yeah, right? I can see it. And so as soon as that happens... You're moving energy again, and you're getting that throat chakra out of the way, or that I'm I gotta control everything out of the way. Because you ever notice, like I'm always trying to get something done. I gotta gotta I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. And then all of a sudden, I give up on it, and in it comes. Yes. Right. Yes. It's that surrender. It's that letting go. And I think that's really hard to do, especially I think it's hard for anybody, but I think children of trauma, it's really hard to do because. We put our best, we put our trust in our parents. No offense, because I love my mom and dad. They've been gone a long time, and I've forgiven them for everything. But I put my trust in them when I was a little girl, and that didn't work out too good. Exactly. So then, as as adults, we tend not to trust the universe. We tend not to trust life. We tend not to trust our even our spouses, our loved ones. We don't trust anyone. 
Right. And then I get in this guru school and, you know, that didn't work out too well for me either. So, yeah. So it's really important that we learn to surrender. But we can't, I'm not quite sure I could ever learn it. I, I'm kind of one of those people that sort of needed to be kicked in the head with it. Mm-hmm. And so, Om Namo Narayani, 21 times. Oh. What does it take? Two minutes? So let's let's say that again slowly because it's. It, I want people to get it. So it's Om. Yeah, let's do it. yeah. We'll, do it, we'll do it together. We'll do it together, yeah. Okay. Om. Right. Om. Namo. Namo. Narayani. Narayan. Om. Namo. Namo. Narayani. Narayani. Om Namo Narayani. Om Namo Narayani. Perfect. Okay. And it's cha- I surrender to the universe. And the good thing about that is for so many of us, like you and I, especially that have that type A brain and that you know active monkey mind, it gives <laughs> the brain something to do so that we can actually meditate. Gotcha. Yes, because if not, our brain's going all over the place. <laughs> right. My brain's wondering what I'm having for lunch, who's my next <laughs> client, what am I wearing tonight, you know? Right. <laughs> and so this gives the brain something to do so that the universe can put some beautiful energy in us. And I'll tell you something. I really will tell you, I, I feel very strongly about this. If you did that every morning, rub your palms together, say Om Namo Narayani 21 times. If you did that every day, for 14 days, I promise you, you will see a difference in your life. You will see a difference in every day. You'll get to like two o'clock in the afternoon and you'll be like, wow, I'm really having a good day. Let's make this a, let's make this a positive challenge. I Let's make yeah. this a four, was it 14 days you say? 14 days. Let's make this a 14 day challenge. The, the uh, Om Namo Narayani, 14 days. That's a long, that's a long title for a 14 day challenge. What do we want to call it? <laughs> let's call, um let's just call it 14 day challenge to peace there we go or okay. 14 day challenge to abundance because that's really what it's for oh yeah and that'll get more people doing it <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true but it really is it's really for abundance because i can't bring in wealth uh, yes. if i'm living in the vibration of lack and abundance is not just about the ducats and the dollars it's about yeah. our health it's about our the, yeah. the, the relationships we have it's about our passion in life so uh, the 14 day challenge to abundance. I like that. We'll I'll we'll put that into all verbiage here so people can um can access that. And um, really yeah. make them do and really ask them to do the red balloon because I think that that's extraordinary. I like when people I like when people's breath are taken away. <gasps> oh my god, that there's no way that balloon could be there. I yes. love that. Well, you definitely you took my breath away. Like I said, after after I had my session with you, I'm not going to go into the complete details of everything, but mm-hmm. but I mean it was it was quite immediate. And then during the session with you, um, of course, I was able to feel shifts in my energy um, very much. And one of the things that I appreciated too with you is that again, because you have the you're you're blending modalities, but because you're because you're also so because you're so psychic you're able to see the big picture of what's going on right. with the person. So the emotions that are coming up, you're, you're able to see them in the body. You're able to, 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 to find out yeah. where they're coming from and on how they need to be released because we're carrying this stuff around. I'm 54. So um, I know that there are people that carry around their entire lives. Like, like yeah. if they make it to old age, they're still carrying these wounds around. Right. Why do I, somebody would say to me, why do I have back, back, bad back all these years? Oh, well, let's go look. Lower back is financial instability, abandonment. Mm -hmm. So let's see which trauma we got. Right. Right. And then we, and we get it out. Yeah. What an incredible, what an awesome uh, uh, thing to do for a living. And, and what a, what a, it's so cool. How rewarding is that for you too? It's incredibly rewarding. You know, when I when I had my wellness center, I was running this free healing clinic every Monday night. And that and that was really cool. But I, I wasn't sure yet still that I wanted to be a healer. You know, I still owned the restaurant at the time. And my sobriety was getting better. I mean, it was still, in, you know, bits and pieces, but it was getting better. But I didn't know about the trauma work. And, I, and so I, I felt like I was making a difference, but not much. And, and I think that when I look at that, I would say the exact same thing for me. I think it took me 10 years uh, 
to try to get sober and well, let's say six years to try to get sober and get happy and healthy. Um, and it was just because we were just sort of moving things around versus really pulling them out. And once you pull them out, they're gone. And this is the, this is what's so phenomenal about it because like you just said, once you pull them out, once they're gone, it's gone. Doesn't come back. And it, back. and it's all, and, and what's lovely too, is that it's with all within the control of the person too. Correct. Right. And also, uh, well, yeah, it's in the control of the person because they can say, I don't really want to release that, but I don't think you'd be sitting before me if you didn't. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is that, is that, is that when you work with them, it's not like some magical, you know, hoodoo doodoo where no. they're not conscious of what's happening and then poof, you know, okay, I've taken away that, that pain. You, you actually, you do have them, um, recollect oh, and, yeah, and bring. They know that living room. Exactly. They know that kitchen. Exactly. When I say, you're, there's bookcases behind the fireplace and there's 14 books on one side and one of them looks like a really big green book with a spiral notebook and they say oh that yeah. was my grandmother's book right 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 they know exactly where i am there's no that's the beauty of this work you know yeah i agree with you it's one thing to shake a rattle over me and tell me i'm healed that's not going to work for me exactly now i could feel better and it, and i could be healed but it's not going to work for me, you know, mentally. No, we see those places. And just like you said to earlier, when I say to you, you know, if they don't remember the trauma, I'll remember the trauma. But it's not like I'm saying to them, um, you know, I'm doing something that they don't remember. I'm saying, like yesterday I had a woman and I said to her, okay, well, I'm in front of a fireplace and the fireplace in front of the fireplace has a 12 inch slate slab that comes out that's about six inches up off the ground. Do you know where I am? <laughs> right? And she went, oh, my God, that's the fireplace in my childhood house. So that's how it works. You know, and I, and I believe, it's my belief that your guides tell me that because you are lying in your beds at night saying, I don't want to feel like this anymore. Right. I don't want to be unhappy anymore. And so your guides go off and up into the quantum field the way we manifest, the way we send energy, and they somehow plop that energy right down into me, and then I'm able to channel that exactly to you. And that's how we do it. But you're asking first. I don't want to feel like this anymore. Exactly. Right? I remember saying to somebody once, listen, I don't care if you have to tie a rope around my neck and yank me off this cliff. I don't want to be here anymore. Mm. Right? Right? Because mm -hmm. I was so sick of relapsing. I was so sick of disappointing my kids and causing that kind of pain and, and sort of living in my own hell. But I didn't understand the work then. I didn't understand trauma. And isn't it funny? Yeah, you, like you had mentioned the the the, the generations, right? The, the lineage of, of like, let's say alcoholism or addiction of any sort or if it's sexual abuse, it goes, it goes generation after generation. It just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And this is an incredible opportunity for us to stop that because when you, when you, and when you do start remembering, because it brings up, I mean, it brought up a few things for me as a child, but remembering scenario, remembering moments of childhood like it was just yesterday yeah i know right and I then know. and then but then what i what i how i came how i came away from it too was so um empowering because i came away from it like holy shit i was an amazing survivor how the f how did i do yeah. that like like i was a, i was a princess warrior you know yep. driving around you know uh canaan road on these cliffs you know, with with a parent being heavily intoxicated, and it was the the guiding you know arms of of God and love and the divine universe that we did not go over that cliff. And I remember right. sitting in the back seat of that car, going, "Just get me home. I just get please. I just want to." Because because and you, what embedded in you as a child? Because I'm sure that happened time after time after time. I need what control. Embedded in you is I'm not safe and I've got to control everything. Uh, exactly. I've got to control right? everything. Well, and then remember I, yeah. that at the end of the session, I think this is important because I think people come think that, you know, they're going to come in and I'm just going to rip all this stuff out, which I do. Um, but remember at the end of the session, we go to bliss. 
Oh, yes. And we refill all those cells that we took everything out of and we, we clean everything out and we go into that really loving, beautiful, high vibration. And that's what happens because we take it out of the cellular memory. We've got to fill the cellular memory up with something else. This is so important. I'm so glad that you brought that up because when um, g- going away from that session that I had with you, I was saying that my like on a cellular level, everything felt lighter and not mean just like lighter, like in weight, but I mean mm-hmm. light, like filled with light yeah. and it's continued. And I, in, and it's almost like it's getting, it's multiplying a little bit each, you know, with each hour. Um, yes, it will for another day or so. Yes, it, de- it definitely is. And then now, so now too, when I'm able to look back at any thing that was uncomfortable or stressful uh, as a child, I'm able to look at it in a completely different way. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's good. The script kind of got rewritten, didn't the, it? The script got flipped. Yeah. The script yeah. got flipped. And I believe, I wholeheartedly believe that if we're able to heal in this lifetime, in on this timeline ourselves at this point, and that and, and with the help of wonderful human beings like you, of course, but what, if we're able to do that now, like you said, not only are we stopping that trauma from continuing in, into our children and their children's children and them for, you know, generations afterward, but the people who actually perpetrated those traumas upon us, they were hurting themselves. Yeah. As big of bad of a monster that they might have felt like when you were five or six years old, they themselves were hurting and they themselves were dosing themselves with either drugs or alcohol or whatever to stop that pain. And then of course, committing more pain in that, in, in relation right. to that. But if we can stop the trauma now, if we can heal the trauma now with light and love, then it is, it is not only affecting the, the people to come after us, but even the person that had done those, that did those things to us. And right. I think that is so powerful and i think that also works in the fact that eventually and this took me a long time but eventually in releasing the trauma i was able to find forgiveness from my mom and dad big that's that's huge and that did take me a while i have to admit you know that that was a tough one well because we carry yeah no we carry around this um this weight with us um some people say well i can um you know or they say i can forgive but i'll never forget um, other folks are like, I'll never forgive you. And I yeah. think that that is, I, I do think that that's quite a big burden th- that we carry with us. Um, I think so too. And I think when I could look at my mother, uh, when I could go back to the traumas and look at my mother and see my grandfather behind her mm. and realizing, oh, he probably used to beat her or yeah. he probably, you know, yeah. whatever, that I could have compassion for my mother. Yes. That she did the best she could and that she, just like I, when she couldn't take the pain anymore, went to a bottle of, sh- well, she went to beer, uh, w- went to a drink. But it was only when she couldn't take the pain anymore. Mm. And the pain for her was that nobody loved her, right? She comes from a, a father who was pretty abusive and then she marries my father who ends up having an affair and is a workaholic and, you know, she's left alone with four kids and blah, 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 you know? Everybody's story is different, but the core traumas are the same, and that's what we do. So uh, we don't look at genes and you know anymore. We look at epigenetics. We look at the environment. I love what you do. I think I think it's so vitally important, and I'm so grateful. I can't believe a whole hour has just flown by. <laughs> I know. Um, I I want to thank you so very much, uh, Denise Lamoureux, for being with us today. And and how can our listeners get in touch with you, either for to book a session with you or to find out more about the work that you do? What's the best way for them to reach you? Sure. My website is healingswithdenise.com. That's healings with a, a plural, right? Healings, mm-hmm. healingswithdenise.com. And my email is on the website, which is denise at healingswithdenise.com. Nice and easy. <laughs> yep. And my Facebook page is, uh, or, or uh, Instagram is Denise Lamoureux, L-A-M-O-U-R-E-U-X. E-U-X. Okay, and we'll have all of the spelling and the information and the links um, associated with this podcast. We'll, we'll make sure that so people can get in touch with you as well. But 
thank you again. And thank you for my wonderful healing session. And I hope that we can um, have a lot more healing happening uh, around the world. Thanks to, to the yeah. wonderful work that you do. And you're going to spark um, inspiration in other people to do this as well. This is what we want to do, too. We want to have we want to have this be the ripple effect. Correct. And that's exactly what we want to do. I'm yes. speaking uh, in uh, in front of about I think about 150 people on on addiction, trauma, and healing, and and that's what we want to do. We want everybody out there to know that there is a better way that they can do it. That oh, they can do it. I love it, and if we want everybody to do the 14 day challenge to abundance, right? We want everybody to do the 14 day challenge to abundance, and we want everybody to look for their red balloons. And what was the um, the mantra for the 14 day challenge to abundance? Om, Om Namo, Namo Narayani. Narayani. I love I it. I surrender to the universe. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender to the time. When I surrender to the universe, <laughs> they give things to me that I couldn't have even come up with. But if I sit here and say, I want um, $50, they'll give me $50. Right. But if I say I surrender, you know, I could use some abundance, I surrender, I'll probably get 200. Uh, right? <laughs> exactly. So it's getting out of our own way. And, you know, and you never know what else is, 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 is attached right. to that 200. It could be a great relationship. Oh it could God. be some wonderful opportunity. A new car. A new car. You get a car. You get a car. Um, Denise Lamoureux, thank you so much uh, again for joining us today. And I, I want to let our listeners know, again, you can find out more by going to healingswithdenise.com. That's healingswithdenise.com. Or check her out on Facebook and the Twitters. And also, I want to thank you so much, listeners, for, for staying uh, with us in this program. And I want you to participate as much as you can. So please, if you can, uh, you can share this program uh, from YouTube. There's a, uh, a link that you can share and you can put in your social media. You can share it in emails. Get this information out. I think it's quite uh, phenomenal. And um, and if, if we can heal some of those past traumas, my goodness, we'll make the world a better place. So thank you again, Denise, so much. And thank you listeners for, for tuning in today. Thank you, love. Thank you. And as always, I want to remind you to think outside the box. Until next time, bye for now. Bye-bye.